we're going to have some fun playing around with Joda. Now, Joda is a program that was created by Luke Anselin and a bunch of other people. And uh, Luke is a great guy, brilliant guy. And this is a wonderful program to explore spatial data, to start to try to just see uh, what the spatial patterns are when it comes to looking at various variables and various different relationships. So it's a great program. Download it. I'll put a link in the description of the video, of course. And um, there are several programs here. Luke Anselin recently moved to the University of Chicago. And here on his software page, there are a few different things you can download. Let's just today look at Geoda. Maybe we'll look at Geoda space a little bit later in a future video. Download Geoda. So we click on Geoda there uh, and then click on download. You can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And the data that we're going to be using today is a data set we created in a previous video. And if you haven't followed along with that video, that's okay. You can download that. I'll also put a link in the description of the video here and on my website. Go to spatial.berkeyacademy.com and click on link to file downloads and that will take you to the files page. And the data we'll be using is the spatial data set that we created NCVA County Variables Shapefile.zip. So this is a zip file that has several different files in it. Download that. And then if you're on a Windows computer, I put it in this little folder here. Just right click, extract all. Windows wants to know where we want to put the data. And by default, it's just going to create a little subfolder within the folder we're in there. Okay. And here are all the files. So five of these files are the ones we created before. And I have a little description where I typed a text file with some basic descriptions of what some of these variables basically mean. So when you're playing around with this, please, after you watch this video, continue playing around with Geoda. I want you to see what you can do to create something interesting, to find some interesting relationships, and let me know what you find. Please feel free to leave a comment in the comments below the video and let everybody know what kind of interesting things you were able to do with these tools. But let's just get started. Let's double click to open Geoda, and you get two windows that open, a little floating toolbar here. We'll kind of put that at the top of our screen here. And then this is asking us what we want to open up. Now you can see I've been working with this before and I could click over here on the right hand side if I wanted to. But the easiest way to get your data in here is just to left click the .shp, the shape file, and left click, drag, drop it where it says to drop it and it opens up a little map with the North Carolina and Virginia counties we were looking at in the last video. Now the most interesting thing here is not that Joda can make a little map, it's what happens when you have multiple windows open. So let's open a couple of additional windows. Let's start by opening up, let's click the little picture of a table here, and that opens up a table with the data. So let me move that over on the right hand side here. And the cool thing is linking and brushing. Linking is the idea that these windows are linked. Whatever happens on the map happens in the table and vice versa. And brushing means that you can left click with your mouse and drag to make a rectangle. And let me do it in North Carolina here. And as I drag to select more and more counties, you see what happens to the table. Those counties over there get selected. So for example, if we want to say, hey, what county is that? Then we can just go over here and scroll down in our data and we can learn more about that county, Rockingham County in Virginia. And the opposite, if we click on a row number over here, it tells us what county that is in the map. So very interesting, but so far nothing that is really unique to Geoda. Here's where the magic really starts to happen when we start opening up even more windows. Let's go to Explore and just start creating some of these 
descriptive statistics things here, like we could do a hist simple histogram. Let's look at, for example, sales per capita. That's that's the interesting variable to me. And let's let's unselect just by clicking the background of the map. So here's a histogram of per capita sales per year for hard liquor. So these are things like rum, whiskey, vodka. And we see there are some outliers over here on the right hand side. So we want to know where those outliers are. Left click and drag and select those on the histogram and it also lights those up on the map for us. So we can see where those are. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's create a scatter plot matrix. So explore, scatter plot matrix. And let's just pick a couple of variables here. Sales per capita. And let's say, look at here, college enroll percent. Let's add that one there. And let's add one more just to, let's say Baptist. What percentage of people are Baptists in an area? So I'm going to close this box. Here we have a scatter plot matrix. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. So here's sales per capita in the first row and the first column. College enrollment percent of people who are currently enrolled in college in this county in the middle row and the middle column. So here's a histogram of what percentage of people are enrolled in college. And of course you see some outliers. And then we see the scatter plots. Sales per capita and the enrollment in college is this scatter plot right here with college enrollment on the x-axis, sales per capita on the y. And this trend line is showing that there's some kind of relationship here. So suppose we wanted to know which counties are these outlier counties up here that have very, very high sales per capita and very, very high college enrollment of 30 to 40 percent. Let's select those. Now several things start to happen at once. Number one, the original trend line we had was black, and that uses all the data. When we start to select some of these points by drawing a little box, we get two more lines. The red line, this is the trend line of only the selected dots, only the selected counties over here in the graph. And then we get a blue trend line, and the blue trend line is the unselected. So we can see the difference between the relationship between these places. We can see where these places are. And so if we were to say pull out a map of, it looks like most of these places are in Virginia. This one right here, this is Watauga County where Appalachian State University, my undergraduate alma mater is. It's a small county with a big college basically is what we're looking at here. Up here in Virginia, this is where Virginia Tech is, Blacksburg, Virginia my father's alma mater, by the way, for, for his uh, civil engineering degree. And I think Williamsburg, Virginia, I think William and Mary is one of these uh, places up here. Uh, we might also, so what percentage of people are Southern Baptists? Now, why Southern Baptists? And when we're talking about drinking, well, historically, they have a church position against drinking. I'm not sure if this is currently true, but back in the early 1900s and even up to, I, I think, the 1960s, 1970s at least, they had a position where drinking is bad and this was taught in the church. So here if we look at what percentage of people are Baptists, the little histogram here at the intersection of Baptists and Baptists, we can look and see, well, what are the areas that have a lot of Baptists in them? Okay, mountains of North Carolina and a few other counties that are spread around. So this linking and brushing is really cool. Again, I really like the idea that you can look at the counties that have a lot of Baptists and then see, is there a different relationship between, uh, say, percentage of people in college? where you have a lot of Baptists, are there a lot of people in college? No, right? It highlights those counties on the histogram here. Also shows you that the relationship between college enrollment and sales per capita is a very flat one, 
in those counties where you have a whole lot of Baptists. So also they have a nice bubble chart you can make where the size of the bubbles and the color of the bubbles represent different things. You can do an averages chart. This is a very interesting tool here. Again, let's, let's select, say, sales per capita. And we can select a few counties. So let's select, say, the mountain counties here in Virginia and North Carolina and see is there a difference in the amount of alcohol sold per person. And I define this as per person who's 18 years of age and older, just so you know. And the selected is about $48 per person per year, and the unselected about $70 per person per year. So it does appear that people do drink less in these mountainous regions overall, and there's a little ANOVA down here that gives us a p-value in case we cared about that kind of thing. So it's a really neat, quick way to explore data. Now, I'm not going to show you every different tool. I'm just going to show you one more, and then I'll show you a resource for some other things you can do. Let me just show you one other thing, and that's a map movie here. If we click on map and then go to map movie, we can select a variable. And let's suppose, again, let's just focus on sales per capita. And we can have it show us either from the smallest to the largest or going from largest to smallest, kind of dynamically highlighting the counties as we go. Let me see. I, I won't do loop. Uh, we can do cumulative, which means it'll add counties, or we could just have it flash through one county at a time. That would be not cumulative. Let's do uh, descending order and hit play here. And so it's starting with the highest per capita sales, and it's running through going lower and lower and lower and lower. And again, that's, it's not a whole lot different than if we just made a colored map coloring high regions with one color and lower regions with a different color, but it's just another way to display the data, another way to explore what might be going on here. So again, I encourage you to please play around with this, click around on things. Now, in the next video, we're going to bring in building spatial weights matrices. We're going to talk about the different ways you can do it, visualize the results, and talk about the importance of making spatial weights matrices correctly. But before I do that, before I go today, let me just show you one other great resource by the man himself who created these. Luke Anselin and his group have a YouTube channel, so if you just search Joda in YouTube. You can go to the Joda software page. And this has a combination of Luke Anselin doing everything from basic spatial econometrics lectures, using Joda, all the way through a lot of theory and vector, vector calculus and great things like that. I highly recommend checking out his videos and what he has to say. Again, what I'm trying to do is not duplicating what his videos or his classes or lectures do. I'm trying to do things quite differently, making it applied, giving you the ways to think about intuitively what makes a good spatial econometric project and trying to show you lots of different tools, showing you those tools that Luke Anselin has been involved in creating as well as many, many others as we go through this long series with Berkey Academy here. But please do check out the Geoda channel. Check out Luke Anselin. He's a great person, a gentleman, and just all around good guy. So in the next video, we'll come back and we'll continue playing with Geoda, but we're going to focus on making spatial weights matrices and using them in a few different ways. So please join me for that video. Talk to you later.